This video is sponsored by Real Vision. Recently on Real Vision, we've been referring to a specific company as everyone's favorite topic. We've had bulls, bears, and bystanders alike all give their opinion on this hotly debated stock, Tesla. As Tyrion said in the terrible series finale of Game of Thrones, there is nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And Tesla is a damn good story. And yet there's more to the story than just the lively debate on financial Twitter or saving the planet with renewable energy or Elon's cult of personality. Today we're gonna talk about how Tesla fits into the greater narrative of 2019. And it's all going down on this week's episode of Real Vision's The One Thing. What's going on investors, AK here. Whether you're bullish or bearish on Tesla in 2019, like most things, if you've been paying attention, you probably already have an opinion. If you want to see an example of the power of a good narrative, then just look at Tesla. John Hempton sat down with Real Vision to talk about just that. I'm involved in the Twizzfear on Tesla because Tesla's the most fun you can have it's on music. Wall <laughs> okay, gotcha. Basically, it's the most fun you can have sitting in a chair. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> steady, steady. Okay, <laughs> but you know it's 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 really good fun. Yeah, right. It's just so much volume in terms of people's views. It's so emotive, clearly. Yeah. Look, I mean, the whole idea that Tesla is something between it's going to save the world from greenhouse gases and completely change the way we live. It might blow up the world, but those batteries. two Helig Myers. Yeah, really. With nothing in between. That's right. It's pretty right? <laughs> black and white. Both of those views are way too extreme to be real. Is my view. Right. Somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. Um, and we'll find out more on April 24th. We find out more every day. That's true. It's like if you wanted to follow Tesla. And do nothing you could, else. You could do nothing else with your life but follow Tesla. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, one of my staff refers to Tesla as a short seller distributed denial of service attack. <laughs> <laughs> It's so spectacular and such a sort of car wreck that every short seller is just like focused on Tesla. And there's all this stuff out there that they're ignoring. Right? And Much they're bigger ignoring frauds. it because, yeah. because Tesla's so goddamn interesting. And it's big. It's big, but it's colourful. Right? I mean, when Valiant finally blew and they made the Netflix documentary, it was so colourful in the end, it was hysterical. I mean, the idea that a company registered a couple of hundred fake pharmacies so that they could send prescriptions to insurers without the insurer knowing where the prescription came from. Hiding in plain sight. And all of those fake pharmacies were named after characters in Stephen King novels. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> Good I mean, that's bizarre. But Tesla's that bizarre every day. With Tesla, the bizarre ranges from stretching the truth to outrageous overpromises to full out conspiracy theory. Elon Musk, prophet or con man, depending on who you ask, has figured out that bold promises are the key to spinning a convincing tapestry. But bold stories eventually hit a point of diminishing returns. Listen to Peter Atwater discuss how Tesla captures the zeitgeist of 2019, but how these bold promises are a problem. It's way bigger than Tesla. It's not mm -hmm. about making a few dollars off a short position. It's nothing to do with that to me. This is the crystallization of everything you speak about, of everything Ben Hunt speaks about, of everything I've watched build up over the years. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's malinvestment. It is low cost of capital. It is reaching for yield. It is dreaming. It's eco-culture. It's the cult of celebrity. It's everything wrapped up into one stock. And you can now finally see this thing unraveling in real time, it seems. So, I mean, broad question, how important is Tesla to the, to the whole market narrative? And, and then from there, what's your take on it? Because I'm fascinated. It's hugely important. Um, and it's hugely important because of the, the personality type that is Elon Musk. Uh, you know, I, I joke often, you know, he, he, like others that are out there, is, a, is often analogized to, to Harold Hill. The right. music man, yeah. you know, promising boldly. And, and I think of that in the context of more specifically sort of the circus barker. And I, you know, people will be offended by the analogy, but if you think about a circus barker, you know, the first time the, the circus comes to town, the, the lady has two heads and everybody goes. 
And then the next year when the circus comes back, she's got to have three heads. Because otherwise you've seen it. Otherwise yeah. you've seen yeah. it. And then the, the three heads have to become five, become eight. But eventually when you get to 10 heads, the crowd's like, no. Right. No, I just... Uh, it's like six-minute abs. Right? Yeah. The seven yeah. is fine. Yeah. It just becomes so extreme as to be disbelieved. And, and you know, I believe that that's the nature of the con. Yeah. They become self-asphyxiating. That in order to perpetuate it, you have to go to such great lengths that it, it finally collapses on its weight. And I think that you've seen that with Musk in all of the, the pivots. You know, it, this week it's, you know, it's cars. Next week it's cars with solar panels on the top. Then it's cars that have this. And now we're talking about insurance. And so the, to me, Tesla is now the 10-headed lady. Right. And it become, it's become so extreme to, as to be disbelieved. Let's break that down for a second. How many contemporary buzzwords did those two just drop? I mean, those $20 phrases like malinvestment, low cost of capital, reach for yield, eco-culture, cult of personality, narrative, they're all part of a larger story. The narrative of bold promises for a better tomorrow encompass the zeitgeist of today. And that's because people are palpably uncomfortable. According to Atwater, the markets and America's confidence at large pretty much peaked before the 2016 elections. So one of the fabulous parts about teaching college freshmen, I, I, it'd be even better with middle school students, right. is they feel it unconsciously. They sense all of the uncertainty. Uh, my freshman class this spring said the peak was really three years ago. And they could define it in terms of the music that they were listening to, what they believed to be true, that there was a... there that. They do not see 2018 the same way investors see 2018. It's, it, there is no question in their mind that the peak is behind us. Now, the peak in what for them? The peak in confidence, their confidence, the confidence of America at large. They saw something 2014, 2015. So prior to the election? Prior to the election. That's interesting. And so to talk about the election with them, it makes perfect sense to them that Americans would, Americans who feel worse would be favorable towards Trump versus Clinton. So the, it, it feels very right to them that we've, we've evolved the way we have, given that confidence peaked you know, sometime before. So are we, I mean, by immersing ourselves in markets as we've done, are we doing ourselves a, a massive disservice right now in trying to figure out what's going to happen next? Yeah, I think that the markets have been very late to the table here. So the markets have been late to the party, and there's a disconnect between the pumped up markets and the people who haven't participated in the boom since 2008. Through it all, Tesla has been the symbol of dissonance that pervades markets, politics, and culture. A $50 billion company has the most shorts in history and survives solely on the sheer force of will of Elon Musk and the people that support Tesla. But if I know one thing, it's that the markets can stay irrational way longer than you can stay liquid. If you want help navigating this uncertain market and getting updates on Tesla, then make sure you subscribe to Real Vision. I'll talk to you next week.